that record to this computer. Awesome. Okay, we're recording. Hey, parents, thank you again so much for joining us for our fall 2020 parent meeting. Um, I'm going to go ahead and pray for us, and then we're going to open up with our time uh, together. Let me pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for every single one of these incredible parents that um, have carved out some time tonight to learn about what student ministries is uh, going to look like in this next season. Lord, um, in a cultural moment where it feels like uh, there aren't a lot of answers and there is a whole lot of confusion, I pray that our time together would bring some clarity um, and that more than anything that as a student ministries staff and as parents that we would um, deepen our relationship, deepen our partnership uh, in supporting and caring for these amazing students that are represented by these parents. And so, God, we ask that you would speak through us, that you would use the Q&A time at the end to bring extra clarity. And we love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So let me lay out just a few expectations, parents, of where we're going to go tonight, and then we'll have our different team members sharing. Um, we're going to introduce you to our team, let you know a little bit about uh, our team, but specifically how you can contact them and get info uh, from them or to them. We're going to share some of the survey results. We had about 91 parents respond uh, to the survey, which was an amazing response. As I talked with other youth pastor friends, that was an outstanding response from you parents, which is to be expected because you're the parents of Purpose Church. So uh, we want to share with you what those results were. We want to talk about the stages of returning, what the outdoor watch parties will look like, give you a winter camp update, cover some announcements. And then uh, one of our interns, Kellen, has a word of encouragement, a brief word of encouragement for you. And then JT and I want to do a Q&A at the end. So all of that being said, I'm going to go ahead and pass it off to JT, who is going to introduce us to uh, our team. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, parents, thank you guys for just carving out the time to be with us, and uh, we're going to just get through this. And uh, I just want to let the parents know that um, we uh, this past Sunday, we did a life group leader uh, leader training, which was a big success. All our leaders from FSM to HSM showed up. Here's an awesome picture of us. Uh, I think Pastor Eric needs a little bit of longer shorts personally, but that's fine. Wow. Um, we had a really good time, though. We had a great turnout. We're uh, in these. We have more pictures of just like the idea of how social distancing is going to work for student ministries. We actually, on the FSM and JHM side of things, I actually use the poll right there to uh, that is six feet to social distance seats as we prepare to regather. HSM did this as well too. So um, it was just a big process where the leaders are now. Um, they're obviously really excited to get back together, but now they're also prepared to host life groups and to ensure safety for your child. Um, also, we have a great staff, like Pastor Eric was saying, uh, for the FSM. Oh, yeah. For this, uh, this was a picture that we did for our online summer camp. Uh, this is our staff where we put together all those cool boxes uh, for our students and for our leaders. Uh, it was a great experience, online summer camp. Uh, it was a huge success. We're super blessed for it. Um, for the student ministry uh, staff, fifth and sixth and junior high. This is our team. So my name is JT Martinez. I'm the FSM and JHM pastor. We have Jason Abasta, who's the FSM and JHM associate pastor. Miranda Van Beers is the FSM and JHM coordinator. And Monica Dortha is the FSM and JHM intern. And parents, for this, uh, we wanted to let you guys know, you can reach out to us anytime. The information's right there. That's my personal cell phone right there, as long, along with Jason and Monica. Um, so please, if there's ever any questions, you need to be in contact with us. Um, feel free to reach out. Also, our emails are attached there. Um, so we love that. We want to leave that door open for you. And hi high school wants to do the same thing. And for the high school team, it looks like uh, Pastor Eric, obviously. Uh, we have Claire Kalinka, who's the new HSM associate pastor. We have Courtney Romero, who's the HSM coordinator. And then Kellen is the HSM intern. And with that, uh, Pastor Eric is also um, ex extending that. You can reach out to him, anybody on the team at any time. If you have any questions, you need uh, pastoring for your child, pastoring for your family, whatever the case may be, um, please don't hesitate to reach out to us um, for anything. And um, we're super excited for this next season. We are excited for the survey results. And uh, Pastor Eric is going to go ahead and lead us through that and share uh, kind of what we learned in that. Yeah. Um, also, I just forgot to put it on the slide, but we actually have two other interns in our high school ministry, um, uh, a woman named Haley and a man named Nick. They are uh, students at APU uh, finishing their senior year uh, doing a Christian ministries major, and they are going to be heading up. They're going to be co-leading our student leadership program. So we are going to 
uh, we actually had a meeting today to talk about how do we do student leadership in this season. And so uh, Haley and Nick will be heading up that as well. And what's been really cool, parents, to J what JT was talking about, the Lord has supplied us with such a big team and so many volunteers and interns on our team. And honestly, we felt like in the beginning, what are we going to do with everyone? We're in the middle of COVID and the Lord knew exactly what we needed, that every single person has been utilized, their gifts are being used here, and God is really using them to expand the kingdom. And so we're so grateful for our team. Well, we had 91 of you respond to the survey we sent out. We appreciate that so much. Every time we communicate with you parents, uh, it, it's so important to hear back from you, and we appreciate that. I just wanted to touch on three data points with you guys um, just to kind of share some of those results with you. So the first one I want to share with you is we asked the question, beginning September 2, which of these Wednesday night student program options are you most comfortable with? 61.5% uh, said that you were comfortable with the outdoor option and still a 38.5% said online. This was so helpful for us parents because this reminded us that while we want to move forward with doing safe outdoor watch parties and in-person gatherings for students, we do not want to let go of the importance of the online community. We know that um, there's probably parents on this video chat right now on this Zoom who uh, you fall into one of those categories. And we want you to know, we do not desire for you to pick one or the other. Um, we are happy with where you're at and we wanna to minister to your student and your family wherever you're at and provide both uh, options for you. The second data point I wanted to share with you is when we asked you, if you had to make the decision today with the information you have, when would you feel comfortable with your student regathering for Wednesday night? So almost 50% said in September, and the other 50% were kind of across the map there. And that tells us that um, for many of you parents, you're still trying to discern what is the safest option for your student. And we want you to know we respect that. We understand that. As we, again, move into the in-person gatherings, we don't want to make you feel uncomfortable. We want to meet you where you're at as parents and as families. And, and minister to your students. But I wanted to share this data so you could see the diversity reflected within our ministry around COVID and, and safety. Uh, the last question that we touched on was, what should be our top priority for student ministries gatherings? And 89% uh, of you responded that you wanted us to take some kind of safety measure, if not um, all of those safety measures. And so we want you to know that these three uh, these three kind of results and data that we got from you are really shaping and forming along with praying and discerning as a team and talking with uh, our larger church executive team. They're really shaping how we're moving forward. So those were the uh, three bits of data I wanted to share with you uh, to kind of help us unpack the stages of returning and what that will look like. I'm going to have Claire, our associate HSM pastor, and Jason, our associate FSM and JHM, uh, pastor share with you a little bit now. Yeah. Well, hi, my name is Jason Abasta. I'm the FSM and JH uh, associate pastor. And these stages, we have five different stages that we kind of have uh, laid out for you to help capture what we have planned in the future and what we did in the past. This is stage one, basically what you've seen happen in the past couple months of online only. We've only had Purpose Students Live and YouTube Live, and you've seen this everywhere, life groups online all over Zoom, this was stage one. And stage two is what we're gonna be doing next. It's starting September 2nd. FSM and JHM will be meeting on the community terrace and we will have an outdoor watch party and with physical distancing and everything JT will talk about later. And then HSM will be in backyards of uh, leaders or um, parents' backyards as well. And we will also have an online form for that, just in case uh, anybody's still skeptical and does not feel comfortable meeting in person yet. We hear you and we still have the online format for you guys. And I'll pass it on to Pastor Claire. Yes. Oh, oh, sorry. Yes. Hi, everyone. My name is Claire and I'm the HSM Associate Pastor. And so stage three um, would be the next step after stage two. And we would have all students on campus on Wednesday nights. So especially for you HSM families, we see you, we know that you um, are driving to different locations. Um, some of you families may be driving to multiple. So we we see you, we appreciate you. And um, our, our next step that we're hoping to do in October is stage three, is stage three where all ministries, FSM, JHM, and HSM 
are on campus on Wednesday nights and we would also have that online option as well. And then in stage four, we would have all students on campus on Wednesday nights and Sunday mornings. So for um, HSM students, that means that they get to experience a worship service and serve as well. And for FSM and JHM students, that means that there would be an in-person program available to them on Sunday mornings. Um, and then of course, we will also have the online option as well. And finally, stage five is back to our, our typical flow where each ministry is back in their designated room. Um, we would have separate programs at that point. Um, and as you can see, we also um, still want to have a strong online presence. As we come out of this season, um, we, that is something that we really want to build and um, continue on in the future. So um, as all of you know, um, in this season, pivoting, um, changing plans is just kind of the name of the game. So we, we just want you to know that um, we long to serve your students. We still desire to see every student everywhere following Jesus, um, but we want to do so safely. Um, we want to honor each other. So we're holding our plans loosely up to the Lord and um, just know that some of these details for the stages may change. Um, we may have to go back to a different part of a different stage at, at any time, um, but we wanted to share our big picture plan um, with you all. So um, with that, to explain more about stage two, which will launch on Wednesday, is Pastor JT. Yeah, so I'm going to just break down kind of uh, what the format's going to look like. So um, like Claire and Jason said, we're still going to be doing Purpose Students Live, which happens on Wednesday nights. Um, you can go to youtube.com slash Purpose Students Live. That is the direct link that you can click on to see um, past messages as well as future ones. Um, how it looks like for the service flow, uh, 645 is the pre-party with prizes. So usually some type of trivia, some type of game where we're getting kids interacting on the chat and uh, we're choosing a winner for a prize. Uh, then we go into a little buffer, uh, like five minute countdown video. Um, then we go have our welcome. We'll do some announcements and we've been doing a lot of student drop offs and um, Courtney or Eric has been making a video just to show uh, students and families uh, what that looks like. Um, then we transition to worship where we have two songs. Uh, we'll hear a message. We'll play a game at the end, and then uh, usually myself or whoever's hosting will wrap up, wrap it up with like what they uh, got out of it, as well as uh, any closing announcements. And then at 7:45, they have a life group. So um, that's our Wednesday night format. Um, we're actually going to be kicking off a brand new series uh, starting this Wednesday. That I'm honored that I get to kick it off. We're going to be answering the question, "How can I grow my relationship with God?" Our series is all is called "Can I Ask That?" and the this series is all about the students. The students submitted these questions. We had students submit tons of questions, lots of diversity in that. And we felt like these were the best ones to address in, a, in this, uh, just for the students and just where they're at. Also acknowledging we're not just preaching to a 12th grader, but also a fifth grader. So we really wanted to make the, the questions relevant for all ages. So um, this is the series. It's going to take us all the way through October, which is going to be really nice. And uh, we're just encouraging um, students to tune in, but also invite their friends. And then uh, even giving you these questions now, parents, so you can engage with your child. Uh, later in the week about this. Um, it's a great opportunity just to work together and um, process these things uh, unified. So um, going into stage two, like Claire said, FSM and JHM Outdoors. This is how um, the program is going to look like. Um, we're doing drop-offs from 6.30 to 7 p.m. Um, I will encourage you parents, I would, I would really love if you can drop off your child at 6.30. Reason being, we are going to do a pre-party uh, outdoors. Um, in the community terrace that's going to be separate from the online program um it's going to start at 6 45 um we just think it'd be really cool if you can drop off your child earlier uh, obviously just to be able to connect with social distancing uh, but also to experience what it looks like to do service again on campus and still having that fsm and jhm excitement and flair that we want to do um, program will go all the way up till 8 30 and we're asking parents um if you can show up at 8 30 to pick up your child that'd be great um 
in this program, we'll have, uh, we'll watch Purpose Students live together. We have a 65 inch flat screen TV on a stage um, where students can, are gonna be able to watch. We're also gonna have two hosts up front too, interacting with the students. So it's not them just simply watching a video. They're gonna have interaction, whether it's me, Jason, or Monica, or whoever's hosting, um, they'll be able to have some interaction. Um, they're gonna have life groups with leaders. Uh, which is going to be super awesome. We're going to put leaders uh, all scattered around. Um, we're going to make sure it's really done right where um, students are not cross, uh, cross uh, walking or anything like that. We definitely want them to be able to have physical distancing like it's stated there. Um, we want uh, you guys to know masks are required for students and leaders. Um, we just feel like it's super appropriate based on the survey too that we have masks that they're required. Um, bathrooms will be open. We will have a process though, about one at a time, um, just to ensure like, you know, let's be honest, kids can mess around in the bathrooms. It's happened before. Um, we wanna keep them clean, we wanna keep them safe. So we have a system for that. And also there's no food. We won't be selling any food or having any snacks or anything like that. So parents, uh, please feed your child at home prior to coming. Um, we will have water bottles available for the child, uh, but we would love to encourage you parents, um, if you wanna bring your own hydro flask or water bottle, that's totally fine. We're all good with that, but we won't, uh, there won't be any food at all. So that's how the outdoor format's gonna go. Um, if we can go to the next slide. Um, we still have our online format too. And parents, I want you guys to know our life group leaders, whether it's FSM, JHM, or HSM, they are prepared to lead life groups for students that are in person, but also online. We actually practice that in order to ensure no kids are left behind. That is super important. We want you to know, we acknowledge that, you know, we're gonna have kids in person and online, but we're still together. We're still one, it's just gonna look a little different. So online format, students will watch Purpose Students Live. We'll have that pre-party at 645. Um, the life group leader will be engaging online and outdoors, uh, outdoor students. Um, the, the, the video chat for the link for their life group is going to be the same every Wednesday. Parents, I know this has been some of a, somewhat of a frustration sometimes with uh, leaders always changing their links and all that. Uh, we got it dialed in. Their uh, link won't change anymore. Um, so it's going to be the same thing. So if your child's wondering what's the life group link, it will be the same link that happened that was uh, last week. Um, microphones and speakers are provided for each life group leader as well too. So what that looks like is they'll have a speaker so the students and um, the students that are in person and leaders can hear who's talking online. And then the microphone is actually so students online can pick up what other uh, students are saying and it's like a th it, it picks up uh, 360. So uh, it's a pretty nice size uh, microphone so students will be able to hear uh, who's talking. Um, also, um, the laptops will be set up in a way where they can see all the students as well, too. Um, so they won't feel like, I guess, like, like they're not involved. They're going to be a part of it. And our leaders, like we did at the leader train, are well aware of that and are going to go the extra mile for your student in this season. Um, for high school, uh, how outdoors looks like, it's going to happen in leader or family backyards. Um, drop off is going to happen between 6.30 and 7 p.m. See at 7 p.m. We encourage you to drop off at 6.30 because they're going to be watching the service and the pre-party will be happening. Um, so it's from 6.30 or 7 for drop off. Pickup is going to be at 8.30 as well too. Um, how the program will work in the backyards is um, they'll watch Purpose Students Live with their life group leader in a backyard. Yard. Obviously social distance as well. Um, life group time with leaders which is going to be really nice so they'll have life group time um, it will be physical dis masks are still required for backyards um, we just want to follow that keep everything safe uh, make sure students feel comfortable but parents you feel comfortable and our leaders as well too um, bathrooms will be open our leaders did say that they're totally willing to let their uh, student use the bathroom um, they won't be giving out any food either so please high school parents feed your child before and uh, they're asking if you would bring your own water bottles. So um, please bring your own hot water bottles uh, for the backyards. Online program is going to look the same as, it, as it's been. They're going to watch Purpose Students Live at 645. Uh, life group leaders will be engaging the online group as well as the outdoor students. Um, it's going to be the same link. Uh, so don't worry about anything different. We want to just keep reiterating that because that has been such a stressful thing. So it's going to be the same every single week. Uh, high school leaders are going to have microphones and speakers as well, too. And they have, were um, 
they were well trained as well. So they're ready to rock. So parents, we want you to know our leaders are excited. They're ready to do this. They're ready to love the students that are coming back, but they're also ready to love the students online as well and create a great uh, experience and encourage kids to grow in their relationship with Christ. But um, that's some of the, that's what this looks like. We're going to transition to winter camp because I know that's a big topic that a lot of parents and students have been uh, asking about. And so I'm going to give it to Monica, who's our FSM and JHM intern, and she's going to lead you through that. Hi, Purpose Parents. Like he said, I, my name is Monica. I am the FSM and GHM intern. And I know most of you were able to come to our summer camp, which was a smash hit and it was so much fun. It was definitely different than what we were hoping for for this year, but it was amazing still. And I know a lot of you are asking, what's next? what's going to happen for winter camp and the good news is is that we will be providing a winter camp experience of some sort um the unfortunate news is we don't quite know just yet what that looks like uh the camps will let us know around october november um what it will be looking like and we will of course relay that information to you it could be online it could be in person and it could be a hybrid of doing both but i know that it's going to be an amazing experience um, and with that, a few announcements. The first one is, if you missed out on, on summer camp or you want to relive summer camp because it was so awesome and crazy cool, you can definitely do that if you head to the link on the screen, purposechurch.com slash summer camp. Everything is there from like the evening chapels, the breakout sessions, student testimonies, all the weird, funny, cool videos, the devotionals, and so much more will be available there. And Another thing that we have available for you parents is our YouTube channel. If you have not connected with our YouTube channel or maybe you missed the Wednesday, you can still find every single Wednesday on our YouTube channel, which is Purpose Students Live. So please feel free to check that out. And if you are wanting to stay updated, stay in the know, uh, get connected with us, we do have text updates for you. For FSM and JHM, you're gonna go ahead and text your individual code per grade that is currently on the screen. And for HSM, you will do the same as well. Um, and another resource we would like to provide you with parents is um, online counseling. The first session is free. We want to make sure that we provide that with you. All the information is available for you on the screen. And with that, next, um, Mr. Kellen is going to go ahead and give us an awesome, encouraging message. Thank you, Monica. Hey, everyone. I'm Kellen. Um, I'm one of the HSM interns, uh, and I'm just going to be uh, looking at a small piece of scripture real quick uh, that will hope hopefully be encouraging for you guys. Uh, so I'm looking at Matthew 11, 18, or 11, 28 through 30. So Jesus says here, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. In kind of an unusual way, we're all home now a little bit more uh, than we're really used to, and it uh, feels like we're really experiencing anything but rest. But Jesus promises us that if we come to him in this weariness, he'll give us rest. And that, that can sometimes feel like it's the hardest thing to find right now, but he's told us how to clearly seek after it. In verse 29, he says, take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. I looked up the definition of yoke uh, when I was reading this, and uh, what I found was it says, a wooden cross piece that is fastened over the necks of two animals and attached to the plow or cart uh, that they are to pull. So essentially imagine like a harness-like thing uh, that you attach to the neck of uh, two ox or two horses or something like that. Uh, and then there's uh, a pretty weighty, uh, I guess, uh, plow behind it that they have to pull with that. Uh, and so I also looked up the context of what, um, of how the word yoke would have been used during this time. Uh, and what I found was that Jewish people during this time commonly used the idea of a yoke to express someone's obligation to God. Uh, they would refer to the yoke of the kingdom, the yoke of the law, the yoke of the command, the yoke of repentance, and so on. And so in this context, it can, it's easy for us to see now that Jesus is simplifying all this, and he's getting back to the basics. He's saying, take my yoke. 
uh, upon you. Forget about the rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. He's telling us that he wants to bear our burdens with us uh, and that his yoke is light and it's something uh, that's easy to carry. I think we can all agree right now that nothing is easy and definitely nothing is light right now. Everything feels heavy. Decisions right now feel really heavy. Uh, having to plan watch parties and having to uh, decide whether or not to attend and all this feels heavy and hard. But pursuing after Jesus during this time, uh, even though it's all heavy, even though it's all hard, it's worth it. And Jesus tells us that we can look to him, we can take upon his yoke. He looks at us, he tells us, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. So we hope that's encouraging to you guys that as everything can feel so overwhelming, everything can feel just hard and so weighty right now, that we can still turn to Jesus and he promises us to give us that yoke that is much, much easier to carry than our own. And so with that, I'm going to pass it on to Eric, Pastor Eric and Pastor JT, and I think they're going to get us going with a little Q&A session. Awesome. Kellen, thank you so much for sharing that. Student ministry team, epic job presenting. That was so helpful and so, um, so good. So parents, we know that we've covered a lot of material pretty quickly. Um, and what we want to do is give you an opportunity to ask any questions that you would have. So I believe if you go uh, over to the participants button down at the bottom part of your screen, if you click that, you can raise your hand. You can raise a blue hand. Um, Claire, what does it say? I can't see it on mine because I'm the host of it. What does it say, Claire? Oh, you're muted, Claire. I can't hear you. Oh, I don't know. Zoom. Got to love Zoom. When, when you click participants on yeah. the bottom, there'll be an invite, a mute me, and then a raise hand. If you just click the raise hand, it'll awesome. a blue hand will pop up. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you. So yeah, if you just want to go ahead, parents, if you want to raise hand, now's the open Q&A time. If you have a, a question that you feel like would be more appropriate one-on-one, -on -one, uh, our team will stay on board, or you can schedule a time to meet up with us or call or text or email, any of those things. But if you do have a question that you think would benefit um, other people, I would love to encourage you to ask it. We'll try our best to answer. Um, I, we kind of talked about this in, the, uh, in our presentation, but kind of our word in this season of ministry has been pivot, that we've been trying to pivot as quickly and as responsibly as possible, depending on um, what uh, new developments are coming out or um, new guidelines or whatever they may be. So um, if you have any questions, go ahead and uh, raise that blue hand. Again, you can click the participants button at the bottom and then right next to where it says invite, mute, more, um, there's a button there where you can raise your hand. And if you can't find that hand, just unmute yourself and just start, just start asking your question. We'll get to you. Um, but want to open it up. Any parents have any questions that we could uh, address for you and, and help answer? Awesome. Is there no no questions out there? Oh, Sean Henry. Let's go to you first. Thanks, Sean. Perhaps someone has to be the first person. Hey, Thank Eric, you. for the um, like the watch parties. Yes. Say, for example, if you have multiple kids, one in JHM and one in HSM, that I see the pickup times are the same. I know you guys don't really know whose house they're going to be at, but are you going to try to have it, try to be logistically somewhere fairly close to the church? So you don't yeah. have one at the church and one in Duarte or, you know, somewhere <laughs> far away. Yeah. Sean, thank you so much. Great question. Um, all of our, all of our HSM life group leaders are today contacting all of their students and letting them know exactly what address, uh, they are, um, they are going to. We also, um, Claire put it in the, uh, in the chat notes and it will also be in this presentation. Um, but we, uh, so all the locations have already been pre-assigned and most of them are in uh, either Claremont, Upland. Um, actually, I'm sorry, Claire, do you wanna jump in here? Claire, with our high school, um, Claire Kalinko, who is our associate pastor, has literally been taking on so much. It's been such a gift to our ministry. Claire, do you wanna share a little bit of kind of where the locations are? Yes. So Eric, you, can you guys hear me now? I can hear I, you. My phone was freaking out. Thank you. Um, but yes, the HSM backyard locations are mostly in 
Upland, Pomona, um, Claremont. I don't think we have any house that is too far. And we tried to also design um, our like pickup time allowance and drop off time allowance um, to give you families time to drop off um, one student first and then go to the next one. Yeah. So just that, yeah. And Sean, Sean, to answer the second part of your question, um, you can pick up anytime after 8.30, probably until nine o'clock. So I, I should, I'll even, I'll even change that in the presentation so it's in the PDF, but I'd say pick up anytime after 8.30, that's when the program ends. But anytime, we'll, I mean, we'll be there till, any, till the last student, obviously. We'll be there till the last student's picked up. Our leaders will obviously be interacting with the students in backyards until um, you guys pick up. But I would say try to get there between 8.30 and 9. And, and I think the locations are all within a few miles of the church. So that, that should be possible. And, and to Sean, to your other point too, um, I can't remember if Claire mentioned this in her portion. It is our desire, so don't hold us to this because again, we're going to kind of see what happens. But it is our desire that beginning in October, uh, all st we would go into stage, I think it was stage three, where all students are uh, on, on campus um, near the community terrace and in the tents and then being spread out. We just felt like for the month of September, we needed to see how the logistics played themselves out with FSM and JHM because between all of our student ministries, I mean, we have 25 to 30 different life groups and none of those life groups can meet indoor. They all need to be outdoor. So that means we got to find all of those locations that have good Wi-Fi uh, that are spread out enough for um, students to be able to be in private conversations, but obviously we need to stay on our campus. So uh, it's a little bit of a logistical nightmare. And so our HSM leaders have been so gracious to open their homes and parents, your graciousness to go and drive your students there. But really it is our desire that beginning October, uh, I think that's October 7th, that first Wednesday night, that all students would be back on campus, but we will let you guys know if, if we're able to pull that off. Sean, before we go to the next question, did that answer your question? Okay, thank you. Angelis, you're up next. up next. All right, well, thank you everybody for all your work. I really appreciate, the, especially the small leaders working with our kids and being patient with them and always waiting for them to say something. So thank you so much. Uh, but I have a question about where the students will, for the students who are meeting at church with their small groups, are they meeting indoors or outdoors? I'm not sure if you covered that already or if I missed something. Yeah, so uh, FSM and JHM students, uh, outside, we're going to be meeting outside under the tents that they use for Sunday service. So uh, there's about four tents that cover a wide uh, space. They are open, though. There's just a, a cover on the top. Um, there's like no walls or doors or anything like that, but we'll be meeting under the tents um, for program and life groups will also be happening uh, out under the tents as well, too. We're going to space them out to where they're not going uh, in a room or anything like that. It'll be all outdoors. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank and you. I, That's very nice. I think, yeah. I think JT mentioned this, but we just bought an 85 inch TV. This thing is monstrous. It has, it is the Holy Spirit's, self-control within me has been the only thing that's kept me from taking that thing home with me because it is the most giant, amazing, incredible TV uh, that our media team researched heavily and said, this is a TV that students could watch outdoors underneath the tent so that they'll be able to experience worship, teaching, and all those other components. So that will be plugged in um, beginning this Wednesday. Yeah, it's so big that they had to actually get uh, like an ele electronic mount that could control it going up and down. So yeah. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. legit. Mm -hmm. All right, Patty Vasquez. Sorry, you're probably going to hear my kids in the background. So love it. I love um, your kids. So that's a good thing. <laughs> I, so I came in late. So yeah. these backyard meetings are just for hsm correct yes patty thank you for that clarification okay yeah. so it's just um, hsm that's correct yeah so just hsm and part of that was we we really wanted to prioritize honestly our fsm and okay. hm students comforts felt like they would be a little bit more comfortable uh on campus and felt like our yeah. high school students would be more comfortable initially and, and really have to sacrifice so high school parents i appreciate you guys helping that yeah just high school okay so i just wanted to make sure yeah, so okay, so Alicia would just be going just to church then. That's right. That's right. Okay, got it. Thank you for that. Marianne, how are you? Let's hear your question. 
Hey guys, it's good to see everybody. So my question is, um, in October, when potentially all the students are back on campus, yeah. is it still going to be a watch party on the screen, or is the is the is it going to be happening live in front of them? And if if not, why is it not going to be live at that point? Yeah, great question, Marion. Um, we are, as of this point, taking it month by month to see technology-wise what we can pull off. Um, because we know that, um, well, here, here I'll be honest with you, here's what happened with, when we did our larger church survey, there was a higher percentage of people that said they would want to come back than actually showed up. So if our stats show that 60% say they want to come back, um, I hope that we see 60% that come back, but I'm not sure that we will. Because of that, we want to make sure that we continue to prioritize all of the online families and online students and, and help keep them connected. So we will continue to have an online Purpose Students Live program. Um, what we will begin to assess is if we can also pull off a physical, um, uh, you know, a, a program, a physical program there, or if we'll continue to watch on the TV. So part of what we're going to be doing is as we watch the fifth and sixth and junior high students, as they engage with it, we're gonna kind of be watching that closely and seeing how that goes. Maybe I could see maybe the first few weeks of bringing the high schoolers on, uh, we would start that way. But just like everything in our ministry, we're gonna be looking at things, we're gonna be evaluating, trying to figure out is it working, is it not working? And then pivoting, like we were saying, pivoting if we need to, um, to be able to offer continued something strong online and something in person. But Marianne, to your, to your point, it, this is such an interesting season because we're kind of in this returning um, spectrum a little bit where we're kind of caught in this middle place of not totally in person with a online thing or not completely online with a little in person thing, but we're kind of slowly moving. So yeah, we're going to be evaluating that and talking with students, hearing from leaders. Leaders are going to be, they're always really key for us in getting that. Um, but eventually, again, that is our hope is to move towards where we all have our own programs again, and, and we'll be trying to move as quickly as we can in that direction. Thanks, friend. Great question. Anyone else have any questions? Krista. Hi. Um, okay, so it looks like you have to register to bring them on a Wednesday night. Yes. What is the reason for us needing to register them to come on a Wednesday evening? Yeah, JT, you want to take that one? Yeah, the reason why we wanted to uh, register for like the first few weeks is just to know how many students are coming so we can prepare. Um, based on the life group of like range two, some life groups are bigger than others. So we want to be able to space them out to where um, a specific area, maybe if it's a bigger group, we can have them in a little bit of a bigger section than we would for like a, a smaller group. Um, so that's the only reasoning behind it in all honesty. Also, because we're going to be printing out um, – um, notes for the students to take each week as well too so we just want to get a range for the first couple of weeks just to see how many students are coming so we can get all the materials we need um, in order to um, meet everybody's need and make sure students have what they need for program yeah and and so are you expecting that that will be a temporary thing then yeah I don't see it as a long-term thing I think it's just a temporary thing it's just to gauge kind of where we're at cool thanks uh-huh good question Krista Parents, thank you. This has been so fun. Any other questions from our parents out there? Again, thank you so much for showing up, parents. We so appreciate this. This is awesome. Any other questions out there? Okay. All right, parents. Well, thank you again so much for joining us. Um, as always, Pastor JT, myself, and the rest of our team, we want to be available to you guys. We want to be there to support you. Um, I know that this has been a really incredible season in some ways for some people, and I bet there have been really cool moments, but I also know there have been really, really hard moments. And um, for those of you whose students um, go to a, a public school or to a private school somewhere, I know um, it's been challenging as I've talked with some of your students hearing that they're, uh, for many of them, not going to campus yet. I know that's been really hard. Um, and I know some of your work environments have changed radically and you're trying to juggle so many balls in the air. We just want you to know we are so grateful for you. We admire you and we are praying for you guys. Um, if there is ever anything that we can do to support your student, to support your family, to help in any way, we are here for you guys. We are excited um, to partner with you. And so um, you are the experts. We just want to come alongside you and love your students, love you guys as families and be there for you. So 
Um, all of our info again is in that presentation uh, that if Miranda, if you could just put it again in the link, um, that PDF, if you parents want to just download that PDF, you can go over it again with your spouse uh, or um, even your student if you wanted to show them um, in case you want to go over it again or if you want any more of that information, uh, it's all there in the presentation. Um, I'm going to have JT close us in prayer and then our staff is going to stay on. If you're ready to just go, that's totally fine. If you want to ask a question directly to our staff with a smaller group, that's totally fine too. We'll be on and we'd be happy to answer any questions uh, that you guys have. So JT, would you uh, pray for us? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, man. Uh -huh. uh, dear Lord, thank you for your day. Uh, Father, thank you for this um this parent meeting, God, thank you for uh, the parents just carving out some time to hear our hearts, hear where the ministry is at, God. Lord, thank you for um, just their investment in their child's life, God, and Lord, for their support. It's, uh, it's very encouraging just to see just uh, how much um, they love their child and how much they support student ministries, God. So, Lord, we're so thankful for that. Lord, as we're transitioning into a new season, God, we pray for favor over it. We pray for protection, God, Lord, but we pray that students grow closer to God, Lord, that um, – as they come back together, Lord, that they just feel loved, that they feel cared for, Lord, that they have fun knowing the fact that they get to uh, be in church and have church with um, their life group leader, friends, and pastors, God. Um, but Lord, thank you for these parents, Lord. I pray, pray, pray a uh, special blessing over them, God. Uh, just protect them as well. Utilize them uh, to lead their child as well, Father. But Lord, we just love you so much. We thank you for this time. It's in Jesus, uh, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right, parents, thank you so much. You guys can go ahead and sign off when you're ready. If you guys have, if you want to stay on though and chat, our team will be here and would love to answer any questions that you guys have. But thanks again so much for logging on. We love you. We appreciate you. Bye, everybody. Court, if you want, you can go ahead and turn off the presentation. Thanks for doing that. Thank you, Courtney. Hi, Woggies. Good to see you guys. Hey, Juliet. What's up? Question for you, since I'm dealing with this day at my job, but yeah. when you guys are reporting a COVID-19 positive case, how are you guys dealing with that? Just that seems to be a big issue for me. So how is it with you guys? If the case student gets positive, and how do you how do you yeah. deal with that? Yes, yes. Great question. So. Uh, I, the first time we had to do it was at the prayer and unity gathering um, that we hosted. Oh, was that in May? Uh, we had one person who let us know that they tested positive. And then we, since we didn't have registrations for that event, we had to just kind of rally up together as pastors and leaders who were there, uh, try to remember everyone. And then I sent out an email to as many people as I could uh, remember and that they had all given me just notifying them, um, trying to obviously keep the person's identity protected, but also just share as much helpful information as we can. Um, to my knowledge up to now, we haven't had any other people test positive who have been at gatherings that we've had. And so, um, but our plan is that if, if that happens, we would notify people as best as we can. Um, but so far we've been okay. I don't know if that's because of doing the outdoor services or people just haven't been sharing it with us. I'm not sure, but that's, that's what we would do. How are you guys doing it? How are you guys handling it in your context with the school? Um, well, we're this close. Anybody work at a CSU, we're this close to shutting down hundred percent to going oh. online. Chico state went a hundred percent online. And I think, uh, unfortunately we're, we're having to do there's repopulation plans and depopulation plans. We're having to look at depopulation I think so that's what I'm saying it just seems to be really problematic with college students and I think it's super prob it's going to be really problematic with high school students wow yeah just wow. to so, add one, one thing to that Juliet too um for our high school groups we are having the high school leaders take attendance on our online groups thing so that if we hear someone notifies us that they came down with COVID we would know exactly what students were there on what night, and then we can communicate that to families. So, yeah, so we're just reiterating that with our high school leaders in particular in the backyards. And just making sure they have hand sanitizer. Just they do. They all okay. have been provided <laughs> hand sanitizer okay. and disinfecting hand wipes. Uh, we gave them supply bags so that they didn't have to supply that themselves. So they're ready to go. Yeah. And we have a... Uh, 
we're having all of our, at, at, whether it's the community terrace or backyards, just like we do for our uh, outdoor services at Purpose Church, every student will read the questionnaire and answer if they've shown any signs. And um, if a student says, I have shown those signs, then we'll, we'll coordinate to make sure parents obviously come and pick them up, but we would have them be picked up from that group. So trying to, trying to take those precautions. Thank Sounds you. fun, huh? <laughs> oh, it is a hoot. It is a hoot, man. Good. Well, okay, I don't... On, that, on that same topic about the, reg like the, um, like how do you notify people and stuff if someone has it? That was actually kind of my question with the registration and stuff too, because I feel like it's kind of a tricky balance because it goes both ways. The benefit is if you have attendance and it's very specific and detailed and you know everyone and then someone's positive, then you know you can say, hey, yeah. all of you, we need to let you know. But the flip side of that is also if someone, I know like my one of my brothers ended up in a situation where someone in his work tested positive and then he was directed to be um, quarantined by the state, by the health department for two weeks and couldn't leave his house. Um, and so like that's kind of a tricky, it's a, tr it's a tricky scale of like how official you make something versus not sure. because <laughs> also knowing like if that means that however many kids I'm willing to put out places yeah. if they're registered yeah. and one person in any of their places is positive then our whole family's quarantined yeah. for multiple weeks like that could that's kind of a tricky you know absolutely it just goes, it goes both ways yep yep yeah good point Krista. good any other parents have any other loggies got anything that you wanted to share I do, yeah. So I have a question, and I would love to hear from any and all of the leadership that, that want to respond. And um, I don't know, this might be a thought-provoking question. I don't need, like, a prepared answer as much. But um, I, I love the idea of youth group and, you know, kids showing up and getting together and having fun together and the fellowship and learning and all that. So can you share with us, like, what's the vision – that drives the church to uh, do all this amazing planning. And you guys have done a really incredible job getting the information out. But what's the vision behind meeting together? I, I'm imagining my my fifth grade son sitting in a chair for the, the duration. and Like all by himself with all the space around him. Like mm -hmm. it just doesn't seem like what regathering looks, you know, what youth group looks like. Like oh. that still feels like isolation. Yeah. I, so, so I'm just wondering, what, like, if you have vision. a different vision for that, that's kind of what I picture now. Because we were able to sit as a family, but mm -hmm. dropping a kid off at youth group, there, there's no family to sit with. They're going to be sitting, you know? Yeah, yeah. Well, Eric, to your to your question, I mean, our one of the things I'm so proud about Purpose Church is that we have a unified vision across any ministry, any department, and it's everyone everywhere following Jesus. So it's every student everywhere following Jesus, and we know that a central part of that is not giving up gathering together as Hebrews 10 talks about. Now in this moment, we've got to be quick to contextualize that. And Christians for the last 2000 years have had to contextualize. Do we meet underground in hiding? Do we pray all at the same time so that the people above us would not be able to discern that we're praying, but would think there's just Babel. The churches, you know, the church in, um, uh, in China blew up, Oh, you know, over, a few years because blew up in a, in a positive way grew over a few years because they couldn't meet so we've all the church has always had to be adaptive in that way um here's just one one interesting story we kind of began to test this out with two of our high school life groups we had two leaders who were willing early on um probably about a month ago and said hey yeah we'd, we'd be down to to host this and uh, or we'd be down to kind of try it out and we had students show up to those in-person ones, even as weird as they were with masks on and the distance and all that stuff. We had students show up to those who just kind of disconnected, even when we were offering online things, online Zoom groups, they just disconnected. And even just that, even just, of course, it's not what it could be or what we hope it to be at some point, but even just that was energizing. I talked with another youth pastor of a really big church and they reopened for two or three weeks, and then there was the spike, and they shut down again. And he told me that even though two weeks of them doing the physical distancing, the masks on, all that stuff, that it was energizing to the students and the leaders. So for Levi, or for Claire, but specifically for Levi, 
he's going to be sitting there with some distance, but he's going to be able to physically see some of those people. And then when he, when he sits around in the circle, uh, there's, he's not going to be shoulder to shoulder like he used to be, but he's going to be able to physically see these people, uh, these guys that are, that are a part of his community, this new community he's forming. And then specifically for Claire, obviously, as she's in the backyard with her senior girls, it's of course different, but I think it will be life-giving and a step in that right direction. And so we believe in the meeting up and gathering. Um, we're trying to do it as safely as we can. Again, looking at the data that parents gave us um, and trying to be just wise and discerning, um, not wanting to put anyone at risk and yet opening this up as an opportunity. But it's also why we continue to offer something online and want it to be really compelling online because we have this new student um, and she literally has never stepped foot on our campus. She is like a passionate follower of Jesus now, came to our ministry during COVID, has never been a Purpose Church before. Uh, we showed up to her house the other day to surprise her with a, with a treat and she had the mask on and, um, and, and her parents were even a little bit nervous about that. And so we made sure we handed it to her at a healthy, safe distance. And she is so excited to come back uh, or to come for the first time. But right now, because of the, how her family's feeling about it and even how she's feeling, she can't do that yet. And so this young woman, we want to prioritize her and reach her with the gospel because she's a part of our everyone everywhere, as well as a student who is very comfortable coming on campus or in a backyard. Um, but we just want to be wise about that. So that's, yeah. I mean, does that help, Eric? Does that help at all? Real quick, I just want to add, like on the FSM and JHM side of things, we are trying to make this the most lit and exciting thing we can possible, understanding that like a fifth grader, um, you know, prior to this, FSM and JHM was rising. There was a lot of like momentum and all these things. We're trying to create the same thing that we had normally on a Wednesday night, bringing it outdoors now. And you know what? I look at the outdoors as a little bit of a blessing in disguise because now we can do some things that we weren't able to do back then without doing an outdoor service. So uh, I do want to like acknowledge like, yeah, it's, it's going to be challenging, but it's not impossible. Uh, it just is going to create, it's just going to allow, you know, it's going to be on me, uh, Pastor Jason, Miranda and our leaders to create the atmosphere that we need and to assure students are being loved on, that they're having fun, but most importantly, that they're growing in the relationship with Jesus. So I do want to acknowledge, yeah, it's going to be challenging, um, but this team is committed to providing that for your student going above and beyond, going that extra mile for parents and creating, a, you know, our vision, like with like everyone ever following Jesus with that is showing kids that a relationship with Jesus is fun. We're going to bring the fun factor somehow. We have a couple ideas that's safe, but also real energetic for kids to get involved. Thanks, JT. Well, I got one follow-up question, if that's all right. Yeah. Um, so thanks for sharing your vision. I, I appreciate that. And it's exciting to hear about, you know, how you want to get students uh, together so that they can grow and to get people excited. Um, I have just a, a question regarding the training that, that you guys have. So you guys have a stellar team. I, got, I The people that I know, I, I think they're just on fire Christians. I think that's fantastic. Um, so when my son, who tends to be a little more energetic in the evenings, uh, <laughs> needs a reminder, you know, I'm, I'm the dad, I can say, hey, Levi, sit down, you know, and it, he, he takes that because I'm the dad. Mm -hmm. But um, if I was a leader, like, w what kind of training can you provide or have you provided to guide the leaders and how to be, I don't know if stern is the right word, but how to, how to get the message that, hey, you need to sit down right now, even though you feel hyper and you kind of want to run around. <laughs> what, what's, yeah. what's the training? Well, even to maintain the distancing, you know, yeah. that's, I think that's one of the great fears of bringing kids back to school is like mm -hmm. kids have a hard time distancing from each other without a lot of reminder. It's just not what they do naturally. Mm -hmm. So. Well, I, I, yeah. And I, I guess my worry is that like ministry is notorious for people, you know, they mean well and they do something and then somebody feels like, the church doesn't like them anymore, you know? Mm. So, I mean, how do you avoid that, but still yeah. provide that safe, safe area area? Yeah. So for us, uh, we definitely implement the lead with compassion, uh, culture value. 
Um, especially with FSM through JHM students, they're wild. <laughs> uh, that's what I love about this age group because um, I'm wild and I totally get it. Uh, we understand, I told our leaders going into this, um, you know, be real graceful, lead with this compassion because kids, they like to break rules. They like to go above and beyond. Our, our job is not to yell at kids, to chew kids out. Obviously, we need to like send them in the right direction, but we're going to do that with compassion. We're going to use biblical scripture to establish that. And when we do that, we have seen our students really like uh, believe in that and actually do well. You know, when it comes to like any disruption within life group, um, there hasn't been a big concern about that reason being when the pastors are out there, students are usually like really good on their behavior because they're like, Oh my gosh, pastor JT's here. Like, I don't want to mess around, you know? And honestly, the only thing I've ever had to do to get a kid to like calm down, I just go like this. Nah, that's it. And they usually do really well with that. And we haven't had like any behavioral issues when it comes to life group stuff. Um, I will say for fifth grade boys, Jeremiah is fantastic with the leading compassion. We actually gave out awards this past Sunday and that was his award um, because he does that very well. So we do want to, we want to understand, Hey, they're kids. Kids are going to be kids. I tell kids every time when I do have to do like a disciplinary thing, you're a kid, you know, you're going to do things that, that you're, you're going to mess up. You're going to fail but let's learn from this. Let's grow from this and understand, Hey, like, I want you to have fun. We got to do it safe, but you're a kid. And I told all our leaders that, Hey, they're going to come back. They're going to be energized. They're going to be excited. They're going to want to do all these things. We need to provide an awesome experience for them, but also give them in the right direction. And our leaders are prepared for that. They're ready for that. And our life group leaders, you know, luckily they come from a, a great HSM ministry. A lot of them, um, they know how to lead and they're ready to do it. So I will say our life group leaders are going to lead with compassion. They're going to be patient. They know the words, the words to say, the words not to say. Also myself and Pastor Jason, we will be out there as well too, to be able to like, just kind of observe, make sure things are okay. We might even sit in some life groups um, to help out if need be, but um, yeah. I will say it's going to be a safe environment to have some fun and for kids um, to not feel ever judged, but rather to be loved on and cared for. Yeah. And Woggies, you remember, you remember the, uh, when you were in your youth ministry days um, that, you know, we, youth pastors specialize in making rules fun, right? I mean, that's what we do is we got to figure out how do you make the rules fun? And so one idea that came to my mind as you were sharing this is, I could even see us starting the FSM and JHM program outdoors with just going over the few guidelines, reminding the students. I mean, I feel like a lot of times with students, it's just about reminding them of those and then holding them accountable to those. Um, and like JT said, the staff is going to be out there. So it's not just life group leaders. Um, it'll be primarily me and a few of our leaders sort of doing the online uh, Purpose Students Live and it'll be all the FSM, JHM staff out there. So I think what we could do is go over those guidelines each night, but do it in a fun way, right? We don't want to scare students. We don't want to uh, make them feel like uh, this is boot camp. Boot camp's great, but that's not what we're trying to emulate. So uh, we want to keep it fun and and yet clearly communicate those. So um, so yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do our best with that, and then be evaluating each week um, how it how it goes and how we can improve it. Thanks, Woggies. Did you, did any other? Um, kind of uh, jumping off of kind of piggybacking on what the Woggies thought about the, like picturing a, I guess sixth year old, sixth grade, that's crazy. A sixth grade boy, like I picture my child coming and sitting and like walking to a chair and sitting in a chair with a mask on and like saying nothing to anybody if he doesn't end up sitting next to somebody who's like already his person, you know, like he's not gonna yell four chairs away to try to rekindle a relationship that's been put like more than on pause even for the last, you know, six months. Um, that I think that's really my biggest hesitation as I feel like I'm kind of like throwing you into a situation that's not like you haven't seen all these people mm -hmm. for months yeah. and been in relationship with them. And you haven't seen these leaders and I, I mean, I, I would expect that it would end up looking like, here you go, and like, have fun, I'll see you in an hour and a half, and like, expecting to get back in an hour and a half with like, well, I sat there and I didn't talk to anybody. I yeah. don't want to go again. Like, yeah. well, I, and, how, I, just, like, I don't even know, and I don't know, it's not your fault. So I was like, I'm not, you're, like, there's not, it's not you. Like, I just don't like any of this, but well, you can't fix all of that. Good. Absolutely. Yeah, great question. Real quick, if I could just chime in, because this yeah. is like Lincoln, and I love Lincoln, because 
he, he's a good talker. I, that's one of my favorite things about Lincoln. He's a social guy. Um, I will say what we're implementing too is like the reason why we also wanted the registration is we want to be able to sit kids near their friends uh, to be able to talk. Also understanding like, yeah, they're not going to be able to like necessarily like high five, hug, all that stuff, which is a big bummer because prior to this, kids were having a lot of energetic playing games and all these things. Um, we are creating a service though where they're not just going to sit there. Um, they're not going to sit there. We're actually going to be doing some stuff. We're actually getting like some individual gloves for each kid to do like an impossible shot to, to do some things that where they can interact and move. Um, so we don't want uh, any parents to think they're just sitting there the whole time. Um, we're actually going to get a little uh, moving in a way that they're not crossing each other, but we're playing some games. We're going to get some interaction and have them kind of sit by their friends. So where they can chat like in between stuff and all that good stuff. We definitely want that, especially during the pre-party, like, Obviously, we're going to we're going to be up there having fun, but we want to be able to have kids like, hey, shout out your friend that's across the room or something like that. So it is going to be on us to do that. It is a terrible situation. COVID-19 has been the worst. I thought 2020 was going to be the best year of my life. It's been the worst and it's made things challenging, but we got to get creative with it. Luckily, like we have a good team that's getting creative with it and we will ensure they're not going to just sit there. We actually want them to get some energy out. We want them to be able, you know, we want kids to be kids. We want boys to be boys, girls to be girls. We want to have a good time with them and we're going to make sure we do that um, during our program that they're not just going to sit there bored watching a screen because that's not fun. That's not church. Church is community having a good time together and we're going to make that happen. Yeah, and, and like our ministry as all student ministries has always been um, founded on life groups, on doing life in community. And so um, they'll be watching the screen, which again has shorter segments. So hopefully it's more interactive and keeps their attention. But they're only watching that for about 35 minutes, 40 minutes maybe. And then they break into their life group. So it would be um, it, it, Lincoln will, or all students will eventually get into that circle with their life group and be engaging in conversation or interact. Obviously, at whatever level the students are comfortable, we never force students to share. But um, that's one of the things that I love about it, and I'm so proud of our student ministries is that it's not just a come and observe or come and see, but it's a participant. There's always the opportunity for participation, which means every time a new student joins. So even if one of your students brings a friend, they're going to be able to connect with other people. They're not just going to be watching a screen. It'll every night always ends in life group. So, and I would encourage you parents who are a little bit skeptical of it to, um, or, or just have great questions about it to consider giving it a try and then asking your students what they thought about it. Um, it, it again, only, I would only ask you if you felt safe about doing that. Um, but it's kind of the same challenge I give to every student. Um, Jason Abasta was one of them who didn't want anything to do with our high school ministry. I said, hey, Jason, was he, when he was a high school student, I said, hey, man, just come for four Wednesday nights. Come and hang out with us for four Wednesday nights. And that was at least long enough to begin to kind of connect with people. So for those of you parents who felt comfortable not pressuring anyone, but I'd say give it a few weeks with your student, try it out for a few weeks and see what they think. And I, I mean, that first week is not going to be like what it used to be for sure. Um, but it might surprise us and it might be, um, it, it might give them a jolt of energy or even for me, even coming to the outdoor service. So I've been a part of the outdoor service, um, since it began. And honestly, just looking at people in the eyes, just seeing people, just being in the same space has been so life giving. And so, um, I'll be, we'll be interested to hear from students and from our leaders and from you parents, how those first few weeks go. And maybe the first week is a little bit more difficult and then they kind of get more used to it. And you know, we'll, we'll kind of watch that and see. That's great. Thank you so much. Thanks, Krista. One thing along those lines that someone else had mentioned to me that I thought was just an encouragement for me and like communicating with my kids about church is like, we have come into this like American culture of church that we say like, this is what church is. Yeah. And that that's all that they've known their whole life. But when you look at worldwide church and you look at the church, like our church looks nothing like the church. Yeah. And so this time may be giving us a different sensitivity to the church and a worldwide aspect that we may have never had. And yeah. maybe God's going to shift some of the ways that we've done church. Yeah. And it may yeah. look like something different that he wants it to look like. And yeah. so maybe we can allow God to work in that and not just require for our own comfort to go yeah. back to what had been yeah. uh, for our own comfort and security. So anyway. Yeah. That's good. Amen. Great, Krista. Thank you for sharing that. That's cool. I'm going to go get kids to bed. Good night. Thank you, right, guys. Bye. Thanks, Krista. Did any other parents, I see the chows on here, any other parents wanted to share things? 
Katie, did you guys want to share? I think you're doing an amazing job. And uh, as parents, we get excited about Wednesday, 7 o'clock. So I'm sure it's going to be an amazing. Um, God is doing something with, with, yeah. with the youth group. And so it's very exciting. Mm, thanks for sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. And that has been one thing that's been really fun is we've heard from lots of parents that they've been able to tune in together as a family. And I think it's for some families, it's given them an even more detailed picture of what their students experience on a Wednesday night. And we've heard from some families who have been able to kind of continue conversations from something JT said in his sermon or uh, a worship song that was played, or it's become in some ways a little bit of a family experience for some people. And um, so that's, uh, that's encouraging. Thanks for sharing that. Did any other parents want to share anything? Did I miss when we're starting on face-to-face? -face? No, that's a great question. That begins September 2nd, this Wednesday. Okay. So this Wednesday, um, is your student in FSM or JHM? The seventh grade. Seventh grade. Okay, cool. Cool. So yeah, so we will begin this Wednesday. Um, if you feel comfortable, you can bring your student to the community terrace at Purpose Church. And, uh, and, and we'll welcome your seventh grader in and we'll, uh, you know, get them connected with their life group and, um, and have a great night. Thank you. Awesome. Awesome. All right. Well, did either of you parents that we still have on here, did, do you guys have any more questions or anything you want to talk about? We're all good. Woo. Okay. All right. Well, thank you guys so much for joining us. We so appreciate that. And uh, let us know if you have any more questions. We're here to answer anything uh, and help you guys in any way we can. Parents, we love you guys. Thank you. All right. See you guys. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye. you.